Well, hello, builders. Welcome back to yet another awesome episode. So in this episode, I'm working with this 18 by 18 by 24 uh, Zoom Ed, actually. And this is from my personal collection. And I'm doing something I've never done before. So I'm kind of nervous slash excited, but I've always wanted to give this a try. So we are going to be building an awesome enclosure today. Don't really know what to call it. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Now, one of the first steps is actually marking out and cutting some expanded PVC board. Now, after we get both pieces cut out, we're going to go ahead and mark out and cut out a little window in both of these pieces. It'll be on the bottom. Uh, this is going to be so we can add some screen and then go ahead and secure it with some silicone so that water can pass through it. Taking some stainless steel mesh wire, going ahead and putting a thick bead of silicone around that window, going ahead and pushing that down and smearing the silicone out. Taking a second bead and actually going over it as well the whole reason for this is just so things can't pass through around the screen. You want the water to be able to flow through the screen and that's it. Now for this next part, I messed up and forgot to hit record. So I did add some filter foam uh, or foam, foam mat, excuse me, uh, to kind of raise up the bottom. As you can see here, I have a big area cut out. I wasn't going to make it, but I ended up making this a paludarium. Um, now I'm kind of going for a drip wall, but more flow than a drip wall. So kind of working with what I can here, taking also the drainage layer as well and securing that down to the filter foam with some silicone. Now I know it's not pretty but it works. Now the wood that I'm using for this is actually all leftover wood or wood that I've pulled out of previous builds. Um, it's all dark driftwood. Don't necessarily know if it's all the same. I really don't want to say that it is because these two pieces have, you know, a lot of holes in it where some of the other wood doesn't. But these two are going to be the base of this little paludarium. So just kind of getting them in place and putting some silicone on them so they stay right where they are. So you're probably wondering why there's already peat moss on the background there. It's only for the simple fact that once I get this piece in there, it would be very hard to get that area done. So I went ahead and did it first before adding this next piece of driftwood. So right now I'm kind of just playing around with the placement uh, until I found a place that I actually liked it, then going ahead and adding a lot of silicone because this piece is relatively heavy like most hard driftwoods are. So this is gonna be one of the flow points. So I wanted to make sure it was nice and secure. Once I found a place I liked it, I went ahead and smoothed that extra silicone out to then go ahead and add the peat moss. Uh, this is a newer technique that I started using that when you put hardwoods up, you can just go ahead and peat moss around them so you don't have to go back and try and do it again later. Now the pump we're actually going to be going with is a CJ pump, the Mercia Plus. Uh, this is an awesome little pump. I've used it in previous builds. It works fantastic for what I want. I do actually have it dialed all the way down as well, but we need to get all the plumbing hooked up and connected so the flow of water is right where I want it. So now that we got the plumbing in place, we can go ahead and kind of play around with the rest of our driftwood. So this is a very long piece. I actually had in one of my very first paludariums along with this piece here. 
So that'll be a good spot and good fit for there. Again, this is an idea I've had for quite some time and never had the time to build it. And recently I just was like, you know what? I, I gotta try this. So I I've always wanted to do one of these waterfall or back wall or drip wall, whatever you want to call it, paludarium. So I figured let's do it. Now using a clamp to kind of hold the plumbing in place and a piece of driftwood, gonna go ahead and silicone all the tubes right where I want them so they don't move. Now remember, it doesn't necessarily have to be pretty because you're not gonna see any of it. So kind of just dabbing some on, on each little contact point on the tubing and then we can go ahead and move forward once that dries. All right, so taking a, another piece of driftwood here, kind of getting it right in place where I want it and taking some expanding foam to fill in the background. Uh, now, the reason why I want to do this is because I want to be able to put moss in at certain spots and the moss sticks wonderfully to the great stuff expanding foam or any expanding foam for that matter. Again, I use the pond and stone just because it is animal safe and I like to make my enclosures as animal safe as possible. Now giving it about six hours for that foam to cure, uh, I can go ahead and start carving it. Um, again, I use just a simple uh, knife, serrated knife. This way it cuts the foam really easy. My wife realized the other day that I was actually using this knife. Uh, she wondered where it went for two years now and well, there it is. So just kind of getting a basic shape of, you know, what I want with the knife before going ahead and moving forward. So one thing I've always talked about is, you know, if you have an idea, go with it. Uh, this idea came to me after the fact, after I started building this, to maybe do like a different type of wall also on the background using black lava rock. So just taking some black lava rock, putting some silicone on a contact point and pushing it down on the glass. So that this way there's a good little portion of the back wall that's, well, just black lava rock. And I think it actually ended up looking really cool. Now to further the black lava rock back wall, I actually ended up taking my little scalpel here and cutting out a tiny little hole right above it so that this way there's a tiny little bit of water that will actually end up dripping down that back wall as well. Once those stones are secure, you can go ahead and take some silicone and run it through all the different little lava rocks there and then take a little brush now i use the brush because my fingers are kind of big and there's no way it was going to fit in between the stones but taking a little tiny paintbrush and kind of smoothing out the silicone so that the next step is a lot simpler now you do have to well put in some manual labor when it comes to it but i actually crushed up a bunch of lava rocks so i get some smaller pieces and some lava rock dust as well so i can go ahead and put the smaller pieces on 
and then go back with the dust to cover up the rest of the existing silicone that is showing. Using some of the lava rock, we're gonna actually create a barrier for substrate as well, siliconing a lot of them down. You don't necessarily have to silicone them down, but I still had some moving to do with this particular paludarium, so I didn't want them to move out of place. Now adding another piece of driftwood here on the side just to kind of cover a big gap, go ahead and putting the silicone down and then just kind of doing the rest of the peat moss in areas that need to be done like this entire side. So simple silicone, smear it out, add the peat moss, push it down, let it dry. Move forward, simple, kind of. Going back to the front of the tank where the water will meet the land for the paludarium portion of this build, I'm going ahead and doing the same thing we did on the back wall with the lava rock where I'm putting a nice thick bead of silicone in there, taking some little pebbles and then putting the dust over it to kind of make it look like one solid rock piece. Adding substrate to the paludarium now and I will go ahead and put up in the time card how I make my substrate if you guys are interested you can check that video out something I do on all my personal tanks is I do put blackout tint on the sides of it and also the back of it so just going ahead and doing that here. Now the reason why I do this is because uh, in the future, when I am all done with the walls of vivariums I'm building, um, the front face of the rack will be covered in universal rock. So this way you can't see the wood through the front sides of the tank where the peat moss or silicone did not cover. Well, now it's time to get this bad boy in place right where I want it, and then we can go ahead and start planting it. Now again, all these plants, with the exception of the moss, are coming out of either old terrariums or plants I've had for quite some time. Uh, this entire build was built out of things I already had. I didn't have to order anything or get anything special.
So this green stuff you guys see me putting up is actually fern moss and I'm using stainless steel wire that I bend over into a staple shape to kind of hold it to the wall. The main plant I'm adding is this beautiful little uh, bird's nest fern. Uh, again, this was taken out of one of my other terrariums that I am no longer using.
right, builders, that's going to be it for this one. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this fun build. I had a lot of fun doing it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Remember, comment, like, share, subscribe, all that fun jazz. I will see you guys in the next build as always. Don't forget, I will be at Aquashella Orlando. I'll see you guys there.